It's probably good to identify the, the number of works to start with, so, and I'll identify them as well. So when people enter the, the gallery space, probably the first one they see in this larger space of the, the foyer and then the gallery entrance is a work called What is the Point? Um, and as they move around this particular space, they find another work to do with self-portraiture and it's called Point to Point. And then they, when they enter another space which has a, a very large um, installation-based work, there's a, a li another little portrait head called Fit Head. And then there's a, a larger work called Fit. And so that completes the, the four works as, as titles of the works. But primarily the works deal with notions of self-portraiture but also um, levels of anxiety, um, sort of a combination of anxiety of self through different forms of representation, some more literal or some more abstract. And there are, I think there are actually very um, curious forms of self-portraiture. In the um, What is the Point work, I'm actually visible, quite visible within the work as a photograph, but it's sort of been um, processed uh, through a dot screen, so it, it's a black and white laser print, but the way I'm depicted is very clown-like. Uh, a clown-like bowler hat with s spots on it, and then with a Pinocchio um, prosthetic nose on my face. And um, there's also a, a text-based aspect as well within the work, uh, which plays with um, prepositions. For instance, A is in B, B is into C, etc. Working through all the letters of the alphabet and then permutations of the connector of the preposition from word or letter to letter, sorry. Um, and the configuration of the elements of the photograph, the text that's in that work, a shovel handle that sticks out from the wall and then a smile that's made of a kind of polka dot fabric creates another face. It's like a face within a face. So you, you get a kind of doubling effect of a, a kind of re-representation um, as, as an overall re-representation as, as another portraiture. So really there's a, a kind of um, fifth work or a fifth, or an, so one, two, three, there's a kind of fourth po portrait in there as well. Major portrait. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, th I think there's a conversation that's probably been going on since we're in, we had been in the same show together called um, Why We Do The Things We Do. That was the show we were both in at Pika, the group show that was put together by Jackie Doughty. And that's the first time that I had come across his work. And so it, it had a fairly immediate resonance and connection to, back into my work for the use of the humour and, and also the kind of art references that are embedded within his work as a kind of uh, parodic critique of what it is to be an artist now and notions of being an aspiring young artist who are, who are, are my role models like is it Sean Gladwell, is it Alex Danko or is it just Tom Polo or you know I can be my own role model etc. Um, so that connection over time goes back to you know, 2009 and then to be invited by Tom to come into this show was a, a really nice um, way of revisiting that moment that we had you know, over dinner or after the show had opened to kind of re-engage with, with uh, sensibilities that are, that are inherent in both of our practices that are to do with humour and the role humour can play, um, perhaps to ease anxiety or create anxiety. So I think some of those notions of the anxious moment, anxiety, are in these portraits and in the work that I've got in this show. So that, that for me was a, a really, uh, not obvious, but that was the, those couple of things, well, three things, there were self-portraiture, humour and anxiety and all those things sort of intermesh, if you will. They overlap and they, they pull at each other in ways that you know, reveal self, but also start to implicate the viewer in the viewing of those works because that's the sort of dialogue that um, once you actually set up some kind of artwork, it either sets up a series of questions in the, minds of the mind of the viewer or it starts to um, 
trigger responses in the viewer that's from their experience or from their perspective. Oh, oh yeah, I feel a bit like this too. I've had a bad day, but I might get over it if I start laughing at it. it, will, it it wasn't a sort of a really big issue. It's like the, the notions of the mundane, the everyday, um, can be alleviated through um, the use of humour, etc. A, a bad day can become a good day very quickly, <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> it's, it's, it's about a kind of human condition that you know, is, is then manifested um, through a whole range of issues to do with anxiety and a whole range of, or a whole gamut of emotions. Anxiety is one we perhaps dwell on because we live in anxious times. And self, very self-aware times. And very kind of narcissistic times too. That notion of the self-aware, you know, self-aware is very much a kind of um, a mirror syndrome, you know, and it's then sort of mirrored um, in a sort of a hall of mirrors, you know, through the, the internet. Um, that's the sort of reference I drew um, to a kind of a Facebook um, generation or culture because I didn't grow up in that generation. It's, it's a very, very particular moment in, in this time and we've all gone through different kinds of stages within the information age, you know, post McLuhan, post Marshall McLuhan. Um, like in terms of the medium is the, the message or the medium is the massage. Who's rubbing who, you know? Or are we just rubbing ourselves in the mirror? <laughs>